Hello, love. Welcome back. If you're new, my name is Jennifer Laurel Keller. I'm an acrylic and mixed media artist and instructor. And in this video, I'm going to share with you a time lapse of how I made this latest piece where I painted a bright and cheerful landscape. And as I go, I'm going to share seven tips about how I make paintings more bright. So if you're an artist, you might want to grab something to write with for notes. But if you're here to relax and watch me paint, that's fine too. Also, this piece is available, so if you like it, I will leave a link down below so you can view its listing in my online shop. Before we get started, I'm introducing a new segment to my videos, which is called Table Topics, where I start with a question and we can talk about it down in the comments. So today's table topic is, what is your favorite color in your stash that you could not leave without? So that's your favorite paint color. And let us know the color and the brand if you know it. And we can have a conversation about color recommendations down below. So I started this piece with some collage to add some texture that will peek out from behind the paint. It's a fun way to loosen up and start a painting. Um, and it gives more interest when viewers are looking up close at it. And once I get my collage dry, that brings me to my first technique, which is number one, start with bright paints. Um, this, I always like to have at least a bright red, blue, and yellow, which are the primary colors. But I also like adding more jewel tones like teal and magenta. And I'll leave the colors that I use in the description, but I also like to just go to the art store and look at the shelf and see what colors look fun. And if you're not quite sure where to start, I do have an online class called Color Quest which goes deeper into color theory. So if you want tips on choosing a color palette and more, that's a great one for that. All right, number two, use complementary colors next to each other. So if you're not familiar with complementary colors, they're colors that are opposites on the color wheel. And when you mix them together, they make more neutrals, but when you place them side by side and don't mix them together, they make each other more vibrant. They make each other pop. Number three is to use dark colors for shadows instead of black. By using darker colors, especially cool colors, you can achieve more dynamic shadows than just using black. Um, by doing this, it adds more color to the painting and prevents mixtures from getting muddy with the black paint on your brush or on the canvas mixing around with your colors. Um, I don't mix any black with my paints and I rarely use it um, and the viewers eye will pick up that it's a dark color and they're not gonna um, really think much about which color it is unless they really study it.
number four is use titanium white for tinting and highlights. All right, so let's not confuse brights with lights. So bright is when the color is extremely vivid, but light is when it has a higher value on the spectrum of light and dark. So you want to use white in your mixes where the form of the landscape is getting the most sun, especially on your reflections. Okay, tip number five is to layer colors. And by layering either with similar colors or with lighter and brighter colors, you will get more depth in your painting instead of having areas of flat color. And I was gonna say something else here. Um, and another tip about layering is that it's easier if the paint underneath is dry because then you won't get any mixing up and you won't lift the color that's down from before, which can cause mud sometimes. Number six is to check your contrast. Towards the end of the painting, I always check my contrast to make sure that the highlights, midtones, and shadows are where they should be. And most new artists tend to shy away from stretching their lights and darks far enough. So it always helps to reinforce those again in the end, and it will make the brightness pop as well as the light. And finally, number seven is to circulate your colors. I always like to switch up the placement of my colors and add small unexpected pops of color in areas where you wouldn't normally find them. So I'll put turquoise in my trees or some yellow in the sky so that the palette is represented in the whole canvas, which creates balance and helps the viewer's eye move around the piece. Okay, so that's the finished piece. I'm calling it Brilliant River, and it was so much fun to make. It's available in my online shop, which is linked below if you wanna look closer. And if you liked this video, I hope that you will like, comment, subscribe, or follow me on Instagram where I post videos as well, depending on which platform you're watching this from. My old YouTube channel was compromised and I can't log into it anymore. So um, all of my new uploads will happen here on the new channel. So be sure to subscribe to get notifications when I post new videos. I had to start from scratch, so it would be really great if you would subscribe to this channel. You can still watch my old videos on the old channel. I just can't access it as the creator anymore. I tried everything, it's kind of sad but I'm still here and I appreciate you joining me so much. I hope this video uh, was helpful. And remember, if you show up and practice with an open mind, you'll learn something new every time. Happy creating, much love.